Dr. Living good today talking about a very sensitive, serious topic from a perspective of clogged arteries, heart attacks, had uh, a grandfather that died of heart disease. My dad had significant heart failure, which started this whole thing of why I'm sitting here teaching you how to experience real health. Father-in-law, stepfather-in-law that's had a heart attack. So ravaged my family. Maybe it has yours. Maybe you're struggling with it. Maybe you've been diagnosed with a clogged artery and you want yours more looking like this, or you have calcification of an artery, atherosclerosis, uh, a lot of different versions and names for what this is. I'm gonna show you right here in this video, six really straightforward, effective, well-researched ways that you can make a massive improvement on the health of your arteries, ultimately decreasing your risk of heart attack and of stroke. So I'm glad you're with me. I don't want this to happen to your family. I saw it firsthand happen to my dad. Luckily, the blessing out of that is I started to understand the six things I'm gonna teach you right now. Took through trial and error and a lot of heartbreak. It costs a lot of money because of all the medications, the open heart surgery my dad had to have. Had he known what I'm about to show you right here, I think everything could have been different. So let me dive in to the importance of these six things on clearing out your arteries. Number one, big mistake a lot of people are making, especially women, too much calcium in their diet. Calcium is going to be a main culprit of calcifying your arteries, ending up in the wrong place, not ending up in the bones, uh, increasing the risk of kidney stones, increasing deposits in the heart and in tissue it's not supposed to be in. Don't get me wrong, we definitely need calcium in our diet. Most of the time you're getting it from green leafy vegetables, if you're eating well-rounded, uh, if you're having nuts and seeds, you're getting plenty of calcium. There's no need to take especially absorbent amounts of calcium in a supplement form, even if you don't have, even if you have bone health issues. So uh, I just not a big component of it. Uh, I always think about, you know, the calcium builds up around the sink or around the bathtub and there's those calcium deposits. That's what it's doing in your body if you get too much of this in your system. So number one, decrease the use of calcium related supplements. That's low hanging fruit, should go without saying, but I wanna make sure that you're not overdoing it. Uh, 100, 200 milligrams in a supplement, not a big deal. If you're over 600, we got a problem there. Get that decreased. Now, to go right along with that, to make sure calcium doesn't end up in your arteries or in tissue it's not supposed to be in, where's calcium ideally? In the bone. That's what a lot of us take it for. So how do we get it there? Vitamin K2, not to be confused with vitamin K1, which is involved with thinning your blood, K2's primary job is to keep your arteries healthy. And guess what? Americans are lacking quite a bit on it. Fermented foods, cheeses of the raw form, uh, kimchi, kombucha, sauerkraut. These are excellent sources of vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 is gonna take calcium from these arteries them being built up in the arteries, hardening the arteries, and it's gonna move it into your bone. Hence, clearing your arteries, strengthening your bones all together. So an ample amount of vitamin K2, anywhere from a couple hundred micrograms a day all the way up to 800 is what you're looking for, uh, for this to get movement from here back to here. One last thing to note on vitamin K2, if you're taking vitamin D3, it is critical to be taking vitamin K2 with it, especially if you're concerned with the health of your arteries and of your heart. Research has shown that if you take vitamin D3 supplements long enough without vitamin K2, you can actually increase the stiffening of your arteries because vitamin D, D's job is to take calcium out of your blood and put it into your arteries. Vitamin K2's job is to take it out of the arteries and put it into the bone. Now. I firmly believe you should be taking a vitamin D3 supplement. It just must, 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 must be taken with vitamin K2. If you do that, research shows that it decreases the hardening of the arteries by up to eight plus percent. Next item up, vitamin K2, calcium. Next up, ACV. Studies suggest that vinegar might have some acute effects on the bio biochemical risk factors that are involved with atherosclerosis. So it lowers blood sugar levels, which is a primary cause of the inflammation, the orange stuff inflaming the arteries. So when you lower the blood sugar content in the blood flowing through those arteries, you are lessening that inflammation. You are causing less oxidation to the tissue that's inside of your arteries. A lot of that tissue is made up of cholesterol. Cholesterol is not a problem unless you 
oxidize cholesterol. Oxidizing it makes it rancid and makes it more of this plaque forming material. So ACV is gonna lower the blood sugar levels, which is gonna decrease the inflammation. Studies point to it as a great way to keep up artery health. Number four, garlic. Garlic is fantastic for these types of arteries. Garlic has phytochemicals in it that actually reduce and scrape away this fatty lipid layer buildup that happens inside of arteries. Garlic has the phytochemicals to decrease the orange you're seeing there and take you back this direction. On top of reducing the lipids, the fats from the arterial wall, garlic also is anti-sclerotic, which means it decreases the scar tissue and the plaque buildup in these arteries and moves you back this way. Garlic is a great source to start putting into as many foods as you can and getting that in during the day if you are concerned with hardening of the arteries. Number five is cinnamon, or when I was a kid, cinnamon. I couldn't say it. Free radicals and oxidative stress are some of the main causes involved in a lot of the conditions of hardening of the arteries. So these free radicals build up inside of the system and they're, they play a pivotal role, unfortunately, in the creation of many disorders, such as diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular diseases, and they're one of the main culprits. So these free radicals are floating through the bloodstream and they start damaging the cell walls they start creating problems in the organs, uh, like the heart, and so there needs to be an enzyme and an antioxidant activity to come along and knock those little enzymes that are floating around in the system, these oxi oxidative stress, these free radicals, and start clearing them out and isolating them. So to isolate these, a great nutrient to be putting in to clear that out is cinnamon, specifically cellulon, Cinnamon was shown in the studies to have this really effective antioxidant uh, effect. It contained the enzymes that were able to bust apart all of those free radicals that were floating around and putting just a teaspoon or two teaspoons of cinnamon into your diet on a daily basis. Maybe you want it in your coffee, maybe you want it in your smoothie, maybe you want to put it on some of your foods. Just don't eat cinnamon rolls, okay? That doesn't count. But getting straight up powdered cinnamon in an organic form so it is not radiated or doesn't come with any other chemicals with it, studies have shown that that cellulon cinnamon does really well at helping to prevent more damage. Now, there is another form of cinnamon. So the studies were done on this form right here, and that is very prevalent, the form you should be able to find. The other one is casea. It is still cinnamon, it's just a different version. This one here actually contains a lot more warfarin. So if you are battling not only the placking inside of the system, the calcification of the arteries, the hardening of the arteries, and you have to also take a blood thinner, you may consider adding casea cinnamon, just a teaspoon or two has high amounts of warfarin, which is the blood thinner in a natural form. You'd wanna work with your doctor on this, but if you can take more of that and less of the drugs, that would be closer to experiencing real health. Finally, those foods gotta go in, keep the calcium down, keep the K2 up, apple cider vinegar in, lots of garlic, add in cinnamon of either type, and finally pair it with rotational fasting. This is a challenging form of fasting a lot of people have never heard about, where you don't plateau by doing intermittent fasting, you keep the amount of glucose and sugar down in your body, you keep your body guessing, so there's less of this going on and a lot more of this going on. In fact, I did an entire training breaking down this process because so few people know what rotational fasting is, but harnessing its power, really get you from here to here. Check out this next video where I break down the, the whole training on how to do it.